And welcome back to the special edition of Hannity's America, Obama and Friends, the history of radicalism, the outrageous sermons preached by the Reverend Jeremiah Wright and Father Michael Flager sent shockwaves throughout the country. Now tonight we examine just how close Senator Obama is to these controversial leaders. His controversial associations have plagued his political campaign, but there was one that almost brought his White House hopes to a halt. It was his relationship with his pastor of more than 20 years, the Reverend Jeremiah Wright. Barack Obama first met Wright in the late 1980s when he was a community organizer in Chicago. While sitting in the pews for over two decades, Barack Obama was heavily influenced by the radical pastor. His second book, The Audacity of Hope, was even inspired by one of Wright's teachings. His admiration was so deep that Obama quoted one of Wright's sermons in his first book. Where white folks' greed runs a world in need, apartheid in one hemisphere, apathy in another hemisphere. Reverend Wright preaches an Afrocentric theology, a belief system based on the writings of James Cone. He wrote of, quote, a theology whose sole purpose is to apply the freeing power of the gospel to black people under white oppression, unquote. Cone also claims that, quote, white racism is a disease. No excuse can be made for it. We blacks can only oppose it with every ounce of humanity. Liberation theology is a Christian school of thought that began in the 1960s in Latin America. It sees Jesus not just as a redeemer, but as a liberator of the oppressed. It's often cited as being a form of, quote, Christian socialism, since it mixes politics and religion. Our congregation stood in solidarity with the peasants in El Salvador and Nicaragua, while our government, through Ali North and the Iran-Contra scandal, was supporting the Contras. Jose diaz Balart from the Telemundo Network was stationed in El Salvador and Nicaragua as a war correspondent at the time. Liberation theology in Nicaragua in the mid-80s was a pro-Sandinista, pro-Marxist, anti-U.S., anti-Catholic church movement. I saw the churches in Nicaragua that he spoke of, and the churches were churches that talked about the need for violent revolution. Jesus Christ on the altar was not Jesus Christ. He was a Sandinista soldier. This is who Reverend Wright was supporting? Hannity and Combs was the first to expose Reverend Wright and his controversial teachings. Now, Reverend, if every time we said black, if it was a church and those words were white, wouldn't we call that church racist? No, we would call it Christianity. We've been saying that since there was a white Christianity. We've been saying that ever since white Christians took part in slave trade. We've been saying that ever since they had churches in slave castles. We, have, we don't have to say the word white. We just have to live in white America, United States of white America. And about a year later, the media began to catch up and the tapes emerged. God bless America. No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America. Senator Obama was in a bind. Does he defend his pastor and spiritual mentor of more than 20 years, or does he denounce him? As imperfect as he may be, he has been like family to me. One of my members just might Turn this mother out. Turn the tables on white supremacy and have a black woman sleeping legally at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. He strengthens my faith, officiated my wedding, and baptized my children. And they will not only attack you if you try to point out what's going on in white America, U.S. of KKKA. I can no more disown him then I can disown the black community. I can no more disown him than I can disown my white grandmother. But Senator Obama's half-hearted attempt to ease the minds and hearts of Americans would not work. After keeping quiet for several weeks, Jeremiah Wright emerged at an NAACP event in Detroit and added more fuel to the fire. Arabic is a language, it's not a religion. Barack Hussein Obama, Barack Hussein Obama, Barack Hussein Obama. But he didn't stop there. The following day, Jeremiah Wright raised even more eyebrows when he spoke before the National Press Club. You cannot do terrorism on other people and expect it never to come back on you. This is not an attack on Jeremiah Wright. It has nothing to do with Senator Obama. It is an attack on the black church. Finally, after all the outrageous comments, the Obama campaign could handle no more. Michelle and I told uh, Reverend Otis Moss uh, that we were 
withdrawing as members of, of Trinity. But what took him so long? He distanced himself from Jeremiah Wright, but this was not the only religious leader that Obama would have to run away from. At the same time that Reverend Wright's explosive comments were playing around the country, Father Michael Flager emerged onto the scene. Father Flager, a Catholic priest, is also a community organizer and activist in Chicago. He made headlines back in May when he gave this racially charged sermon at Trinity United Church of Christ. When Hillary was crying, and people said that was put on, I really don't believe it was put on. I really believe that she just always thought, this is mine. And then out of nowhere came, hey, I'm Barack Obama. And she said, oh, damn, where did you come from? I'm white. I'm entitled. There's a black man stealing my show. Father Flager, like Reverend Wright, is a close associate with the Nation of Islam leader, Louis Farrakhan. Father Flager has even called Farrakhan, quote, a gift from God to a sick, sick world and one of the most prophetic voices of our times. So how can they honor and praise a man who once said white men were the skunk of the planet Earth? And I'll be damned if I'm going to sit back while you tear down Farrakhan and Jeremiah Wright. How dare you? But just how close are Father Flager and Barack Obama? Well, back in 1999, Flager supported Obama during his run for the state Senate. The records also show that Flager contributed thousands of dollars to his campaign. Obama also steered a $100,000 state grant into Flager's affiliated programs back in 2000. And if that's not enough proof, Father Flager was once a member of the, quote, Catholics for Obama committee. It seems Barack Obama thought it was acceptable to be associated with Wright and Flager when it was political convenience, but discarded them when they turned into a political liability. Unfortunately for Obama, the truth has been revealed and the American people know who his real friends now are. And still a lot more to come on this special edition of Hannity's America. Up next, Barack Obama has had some trouble with Jewish voters for his stance on Israel, but his connection to a man who has ties to a former terrorist organization may only make it worse. We'll give you all the details coming up next as Hannity's America continues.